In addition to praying the rosary on the five first Saturdays of the month and making the communion of reparation, Our Lady has asked us to keep her company for 15 minutes, meditating upon one of the mysteries contained in her Holy Rosary. Today, we join her in contemplating the Nativity. Our Lady and Saint Joseph have already travelled a number of days. Frost has covered the ground. Our Lady sat upon a donkey, another little donkey guiding the way according to inspiration of God's Holy Spirit. They set off from the house of Saint Anne, poor Saint Anne, who had so longed that Our Lady would give birth to the child in her house. Everything had been prepared by Saint Anne. And with a certain degree of sadness, that holy woman bid farewell to the couple as they travelled to Bethlehem, where Joseph had to register himself according to the census. Each night they stopped. They stopped wherever they could find welcome. Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich tells us that even on their journey to Bethlehem, they did not find great hospitality. One woman was too vain to let the Blessed Mother stay at her house. Another too busy and preoccupied with worldly concerns. The journey was not easy as they travelled through the hill country, as Our Lady grew weaker as the days progressed. Saint Joseph offered Our Lady words of consolation He was under the impression, in spite of the great degree of holiness he had reached, he was under the impression that they would find a welcome in Bethlehem. As we know, St. Joseph's family originated in Bethlehem. St. Joseph had grown up there and he was anticipating that some of his relations would give them a welcome, that they would find warm hospitality there. Alas, even holy individuals can be mistaken on certain matters according to the providence of God. And so they travelled, finally reaching Bethlehem at at an evening when the day was beginning to set. Saint Joseph hurried to his family members, to his relations, but they pretended they didn't even know him. Saint Joseph then confidently went to a number of inns he was familiar with, but likewise he was only received with indifference, hostility. Our Lady, meanwhile, sat beneath the shade of a tree, a large tree in the market square, and some individuals passed by and were talking about her. They were looking over, pointing, wondering between themselves, who is this person, this pregnant woman? seated on the ground under a tree as night is falling. Our Lady awaited, and finally Saint Joseph returned to her with tears from his eyes, explaining to her that, unfortunately, all of the promises had failed to come through. All was not lost, though. Saint Joseph knew of a cave, somewhere he had retreated to when he was a boy, somewhere he used to spend long hours praying in, like the children of Fatima, with his head to the ground, repeating prayers. He told her they would certainly be able to find a place to rest there, even though it would be a poor, simple cave, with no heating, with no warm coverlets, with nowhere but a trough for the baby to be placed in. Our Lady already knew, according to God's holy will, that the Messiah would be born in such a location, and with joy she assented to St. Joseph's plan. Together they left the town and moved towards the edges of the countryside where the cave was located. Night was now drawing on. Stars were in the sky. We are told that nature was filled with a great excitement that night as the moment of the birth approached. Saint Joseph did his best to tidy the cave, 
placing various cloths that St. Anne had given them around the cave and putting a partition in, dividing the area where Our Lady would rest from his own part. Our Lady explained that this night he would be born. She humbly asked him to close the curtain and to stay near the entrance of the cave. Light began to fill the cave beginning from Our Lady's section, from Our Lady herself. Light was emanating. Saint Joseph put his head towards the floor in adoration of the mystery that was occurring. Dear Saint Joseph spent the hour praying, contemplating the mystery that was happening. And Our Lady, Our Lady was taken up into ecstasy lifted indeed off the ground at that very moment of the birth of the Son of God. Our Lady was lifted up, light filling the cave, outside of the cave, fountains springing forth, animals filled with joy, the good filled with great happiness, the evil filled with despair and fear. Our Lady suddenly gazed down underneath herself. There was the baby. Her eyes fixed upon this small babe, wriggling on the ground. She gazed upon the creator of the universe, having taken a human nature. Filled with love, she adored him, with the greatest adoration that any human has ever given to Almighty God. And then... And then the baby seemed to cry, and Our Lady, almost shocked within herself at seeing the Almighty God making this movement of a little baby, she picked him up, and she did what was natural for a mother. She held the baby to her breast. Who can imagine the acts of devotion of love Our Lady whispered into his little ear at that moment? And then, after a while, she called St. Joseph in to join her, and together they adored the child, laying him in a manger, and then prostrate on the ground, they worshipped him, they adored him with the cattle by their side, and some sheep, and the donkey that they had travelled on. Blessed Mother, teach us now of the virtues you show in this mystery. Help us to see what we must imitate, how we must copy you after meditating upon this mystery. Above all, it seems we learn humility. Oh, Blessed Mother, while Saint Anne was talking about preparing for the birth of the Messiah in Nazareth, you knew in your heart it would be Bethlehem, and you said nothing. You kept quiet out of humility whilst you knew the prophecies saying where the Son of God would be born. And then on your journey, as Saint Joseph encouraged you with words of hope that the Messiah would be born in an inn or in a welcoming family home, you knew in your heart where the Messiah would be born. Yet you did not question your husband. You kept quiet, adoring the will of Almighty God. All oh, the humility of the Blessed Virgin, as she's turned away, by countless people from staying in their home. The humility of the Blessed Virgin who didn't tell them, I'm carrying within me your God and Creator. Receive us into your home and you will be blessed. Refuse us and you will be cursed. Blessed Mother, silent before rebukes, looks like our Lord upon the day of his rejection by the Jews. Blessed Mother, Teach me the humility that you had on that journey to Bethlehem. Blessed Mother, your humility is like no other human, like no other created person. Mother Mary, help me to be humble. Help me to accept the will of God without complaint. And like humility, help me to have detachment from what I would prefer in life. Saint Joseph teaches us here how he accepted without complaint that he would have to change his plan and they would have to move to the cave. It was not what he had preferred, but he accepted it according to God's holy will. 
And our, our Lady, together with Saint Joseph, exhibited such great detachment from all earthly things at the time of our Lord's birth. They had so little to offer the, the Messiah, so little to offer the Son of God. A few little cloths, some straw, maybe lighting a fire in the corner of the cave. There were none of the luxuries that they could have expected in a wealthy home. There were none of the luxuries that St. Anne would have provided. And yet in their heart, neither of them resented this. Neither of them scorned the will of God that demanded poverty from them. They took the path that was difficult. They embraced the will of God. O oh, Blessed Mother, Saint Joseph, teach me this pathway. Teach me the pathway of detachment from earthly pleasures, from earthly comforts, to accept the simple life, the hidden life, the life that you chose, the life that the Son of God chose for you. O oh, Blessed Mother, there are so many virtues that you show in the mystery of your Son's nativity. But perhaps greatest of all, is the desire to see, see your son's face, your desire to gaze upon him, to see him, to adore him. How cold I am, how little I think of being with the Lord Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, of gazing upon his Eucharistic face. But that Eucharistic face is the same face that gazed upon you those first moments after his birth. O oh, Eucharistic Jesus, the same Jesus that was born in Bethlehem, help me to desire to see your face. Help me to desire to spend hours just gazing upon you like the Blessed Mother and Saint Joseph who silently adored you as you laid in the poor surroundings of the cave at Bethlehem. O oh, Eucharistic Jesus, how similar you are to that babe at Bethlehem, your simplicity, your poverty, your lack of ostentation, you barely draw any attention to yourself at all. Apart from these silent worshippers, Our Lady, Saint Joseph and the Holy Angels, the whole world knows nothing of this great mystery. And how similar it is at Eucharistic adoration, when the whole world rushes along with its busy lives outside of the church, and yet, yet there you are, enthroned in the monstrance with your noble grandeur there you are looking upon the few worshippers who have gathered before you in this holy rosary help me to desire to spend time with you eucharistic jesus our lord is worshipped in silence silence what a great virtue we see in this mystery the whole world ignorant of the mystery that is taking place in this silent cave. Words cannot express the mystery that has occurred, the incarnation, the word becoming flesh. Only silence can do this mystery the justice it deserves. Help me to be silent in the presence of God. Help me to be filled with awe and wonder and holy fear before the blessed sacrament, which is the same Jesus as laid in the manger that winter night in Bethlehem. The shepherds hear the news of the birth of the Saviour. Slowly they arrive, slowly they enter. They see the great light hidden in this little cave and become the first worshippers invited to join the Blessed Virgin and Saint Joseph. Later the three holy kings will come with their pomp, with their greatness, with their riches, and lay them before the King of Kings. Our Lady and Saint Joseph, so detached from riches, we hear nothing of what happened with the gold provided by the three holy kings. Surely they distributed the gold almost as soon as they received it. Surely they gave it to the poor of Bethlehem. Indeed, some of the ones who had even rejected them and failed to offer them welcome. They were the ones who benefited, even them, from St. Joseph and Our Lady's generosity. And what of ourselves, so quick to be generous to those who are our friends, and so slow to be generous to those who have slighted us? 
teach us, Blessed Mother St. Joseph, to be generous to God and to be generous to our neighbours with the little that we have. Almighty God, thank you for bringing me to the cave of Bethlehem. Thank you for inviting me to adore the baby Jesus in Our Lady's arms. Help me to leave the cave of Bethlehem renewed in Our Lady's virtues, her virtue of humility, her virtue of silence, her virtue of detachment from the things of this world and her sublime focus on the things of heaven. Blessed Mother, as I take my leave of you, help me to imitate your virtues. Help me to go accompanied by your prayers and to return very soon to the stable of Bethlehem. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.